David Goggins is a man on a mission to totally redefine and reshape not only his own life, but yours as well. This wildly popular social media influencer and fitness guru transformed himself from a depressed, overweight kid with no hope for a future into the US Navy icon that he is today. Not to mention, one of the world's top endurance athletes. According to his memoir, Can't Hurt Me, David is the only man in history to complete elite training as a member of the Navy SEALs as well as an Army Ranger and an Air Force tactical air controller. He's also finished more than 70 ultra distance races, more often than not placing in the top five. Oh, and this one other time, he became a Guinness World Record holder for completing 4,030 push-ups in 17 hours. Today, David has over 6.5 million followers on Instagram alone, and his incredible growth on social media has afforded him the opportunity to transform his living situation just as your dramatically as he's evolved his own body. In February of this year, David Goggins closed on a gorgeous condo for $10.5 million, purchasing the property from Las Vegas Raiders owner Mark Davis, who had lived there himself for only about two years. Situated in a part of town known as Summerlin, David's new community, the Summit Club, spans hundreds of acres and offers vistas that include barren but beautiful desert foothills. It also boasts amenities like a golf course, luxury homes, and round-the-clock security. Other famous owners in this same neighborhood include Mark Wahlberg, who just last year purchased 2.5 acres of the community for $15.6 million, as well as an additional two-story townhouse for $14.5 5 million. Back in 2021, Raiders owner Mark Davis originally paid $5.3 million for the swanky condo pad. When looking to move to this community, buyers can opt for one of multiple options, pre-built desert villas, desert bungalows, or golf cottages. Or someone with even deeper pockets could purchase an empty lot to build a custom place of their own. Besides those luxury options, condos are also available as an option and Davis selected a spacious one. In the clubhouse, Tower, which offers spectacular views. After securing this property, Davis was also planning on building a home of his own elsewhere in the Summit Club, but eventually he realized couldn't see the Raiders Stadium from where his home was going to be built, so he decided to move out of the community altogether. But now his loss is David Goggins' gain. As impressive an athlete as David Goggins is, he might be an even better negotiator because after Mark David listed his Summit Club condo for $13.5 million, David somehow managed to talk him down all the way to just $10.5 million. David is now the sole owner of a 2,862 square foot, three-story condo, which boasts two bedrooms, two and a half bathrooms, as well as a garage with enough parking for two cars. Because this deal was completed under tight lip secrecy, there aren't a whole lot of images of, because this deal was completed in secrecy, there aren't a whole lot of images circulating online in regards to the inside. But what I did manage to find showcases a space with an eye for a modern sense of style. The central great room of the property comes with a fireplace, kitchen, dining room, and balcony all rolled into one. It's also full of dark colors, leather furniture, as well as alternating tile and ceramic floors. The coolest feature of all though is how the nearby glass walls recede to open up the space into an indoor, outdoor living area that's sure to be the best way to experience those starry Las Vegas nights. Then on the patio that surrounds most of the condo, you can also also sit down to enjoy some warmth next to your very own fire pit. But for my money, those sight lines of Las Vegas lit up at nights are the only thing you're really going to be wanting to pay attention to. Last but not least, David's new ensuite bathroom located on the first floor has a holdover from Mark Davis's ownership, a pretty extra Raiders decal that's been engraved directly into the stone of the walk-in shower. I have no idea how difficult that might be to remove, so let's hope that David is an NFL fan. Considering how amazing this place looks, I can only imagine the type of content David might get up to sharing with us in the near future. He hasn't invited us into the privacy of his house all that often in the past, but now that he's living in a certified paradise, how could he not want to show it off? Even if it's just to occasionally address his fans. For those of us who'd like a little more info on what David's day-to-day -day 
details, his fiancée Jennifer Kish has come through giving fans a peek behind the curtain into what 24 hours with David is really like. It's not always easy living with a fitness fiend. And when your partner is also an ultra marathon runner, as well as a former US Navy SEAL whose entire brand is motivating people into doing things they don't want to do, it's probably even more difficult. And for the most part though, David's issue isn't that he's constantly on the go or stressed out, it has more to do with the cumulative effect of all this exercise on his body. In September 2020, David's partner shared an image to social media that showed just how far David is willing to practice what he preaches when she uploaded an image of his feet. A picture that's most definitely worthy of a content warning, so if feet gross you out even on a good day, you might want to look away right now. That's difficult to look at, and even more difficult to imagine having to live with. And yet somehow Jennifer isn't too concerned about her lover's disgusting athlete's feet. Instead, she's simply proud of him. Elsewhere in her post, Jennifer claimed that this nightmare was a result of David's mind-numbing grind that includes running no less than 10 miles each day, not to mention all his workouts in the gym and at least two hours of stretching. What's more, Jen also revealed that like most athletes, David is very much a creature of habit. He not only has his madcap workout routine, he also wakes up at the exact same time each day, drinks the exact same protein shake, journals before going to bed every night, and never takes a day off. Or as she likes to put it, the monotony is real. While responding to his partner's light teasing, David would admit that it takes a special type of person to live with him day in and day out. And luckily for him, he seems to have found exactly that with Jennifer. So now that you have a general idea of where he lives in Vegas, don't forget to keep your eyes open if you're ever around the Summit Club to potentially catch a sneak peek of David breaking a sweat while filming some new material around his community. But if I'm being honest, something tells me the high rollers in that luxury area might not be all that excited about David recording around their premises. Or maybe we'll get a David Goggins and Mark Wahlberg collaboration workout session. Who knows? But for now, I'm gonna call this tour right here. Thanks for watching our latest episode. And before you head out, consider answering the following question. If you were rich enough to live in a $10 million home, would you also take the time to prioritize prioritize the health of your feet? Let me know if you would have adopted a better self-care routine for your lower limbs than David has in the comments below. Otherwise, like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications to make sure you never miss an episode. My name's Kara the Vampire Slayer. If you'd like to check out a few more homes today, then stay tuned, because coming up is our look into the gorgeous properties of Tony Robbins. I'll see you all next time. Bye. There are a few motivational speakers in the world that are quite as famous as Tony Robbins, who rose to fame in the late 80s thanks to a series of infomercials that promoted his soon-to-be popular seminars and self-help books. Today, Tony owns more than 30 companies in a variety of different industries. Millions of people continue to seek out his self-transformation techniques, including rock stars, movie moguls, CEOs, presidents, and members of at least two royal families as well as such inspiring personalities as Nelson Mandela and Mother Teresa. With a non-stop schedule like that, whenever Tony is looking to be reduced, re-energized, and replenished, he knows exactly where to head. His main residence, a palatial mansion situated in Manalapan, Florida. Tony has called this part of Florida home ever since 2013, when he first purchased a two acre property with more than 16,000 square feet of space for an astounding $24.75 million, which at the time marked the second highest price tag ever paid for a home in the Palm Beach County area. For that obscene sum of money, Robin secured himself a home that spans all the way from the Atlantic Ocean to the intercoastal waterway. But it wasn't exactly easy to find. Having never lived in Florida before, before, Robbins and his wife Sage spent six weeks looking at a hundred different properties across three different states. Then they found a freshly built one. Boasting six bedrooms as well as nine bathrooms, the opulence of this mansion is matched only by 172 feet of private ocean front it also comes with. Built like a traditional Georgian style estate, the home is said to include a massive master bedroom on the first floor, while the second floor houses media and club rooms. But the one part of the house that Tony has shown off the most is the epic front foyer with marble floors, gigantic ceilings, a curvy staircase, and enough room for one massive Christmas tree during the holidays. That being said, 
The most interesting addition to Tony's home is definitely the indoor slide that helps him get from his first floor to his basement playroom with its squash courts, golf and racing simulators, as well as its very own bowling alley as quickly as possible. As for the exterior, the home is said to have a resort-like feel thanks to its many palm trees and sand, not to mention a beachfront infinity edge pool. There's also a pair of two-car garages, a newly built seawall, and a lakeside dock among his many amenities, including the ability to travel wherever he wants in a short amount of time. He told Palm Beach Illustrated, My wife has all the resources she wants. She could be shopping in 10 minutes, or she could go to Boca in 15 minutes. It's nice to go have Sprinkles ice cream or hop over to Nordstrom's. It's a beautiful area, and you've got everything you could imagine here. We really love it. For as much as he might have paid for this home 10 years ago, estimates suggest that it's worth far more today. And some experts believe Tony could ask for as much as $75 million if he were to put it up on the open market. Not that that appears to be happening anytime soon. After all, Tony's got choices, and if he ever feels like leaving Florida, then he can head to his favorite destination on the planet, Fiji. In 1989, at the age of just 29 years old, Tony Robbins bought himself a 525-acre all-inclusive resort known as Namali on Vanu Levu, Fiji's second largest island, for $12.15 million. Today, that same resort is worth more than $50 million, and even Oprah once listed it as one of her favorite things back in 2012. Tony discovered Fiji years ago. At the time, he was sitting on one of its many beaches, watching the tide come in and looking at the stars, when he suddenly realized just how truly special it was here compared to most other places in modern day society. He told Architectural Digest, for me, quality of life changed when I went there. I shut off all the stimulus of CNN, the million phone calls. I went deeper. I was listening to the whispers of destiny. Ever since then, Tony has lived on the resort two months out of every year. But before I tell you about where Tony resides here, let's take a look at the resort itself a bit more first. Located about an hour's flight from Suva, the capital city on VT Lavu, and a short drive from that island's airport, where locals have to shoo away cows before a playing in land. This former coconut plantation was built on limestone and lava outcroppings over the Koru Sea. Anyone visiting this intimate resort is sure to find it as alluring and mesmerizing as the Meke dance used by the Fijians to welcome all the resort's guests. Tony enlisted the help of Robert Trown, an Aspen, Colorado-based architect to design the Mole with the assistance of an Indian construction company as well as numerous islanders. Situated amongst lush vegetation, including giant ferns, as well as mango, coconut, and breadfruit trees, this resort has been built in what's known as Fijian Bore style, which features traditional thatched dwellings you'll find all over the islands. The reef 200 yards out provides excellent snorkeling, fishing, and diving, while the majority of the 16 bores offers 700 degree views of the sea. They are linked by a series of wood decks leading to pathways that wind their way through some truly romantic dining spots hidden amongst the rocks. All of those huts were constructed by hand utilizing a team of 40 craftsmen whose only power tools were drills to use in the volcanic rock. In the main bore, the resort's central lobby, timber beams are wrapped with patterned coconut fiber rope known locally as maji maji. Then the roof has been thatched with a folded flat leaf referred to as soga. Taken as a whole, the entire resort creates a mesmerizing landscape and Trown once told AD, it seems to float above the cliff face. The banyan and guava trees help create the sense of total seclusion. Trown wanted to cultivate a Fijian feel, but also wanted to avoid cliches. As such, he drew on the island's distinctive blend of cultures, mixing Fijian and Indonesian artifacts, as well as rattan furniture, to decorate many of the rooms, including the Beulah. As such, he drew on the island's distinctive blend of cultures, mixing Fijian and Indonesian artifacts, as well as rattan furniture, to decorate many of the rooms, including the Beulah house, a grand villa that boasts two adjoining guest quarters, walls paneled in wood, a pool, as well as private access to the beach. Meanwhile, the resort's open air 
premier dining spot features more of the traditional thatch roof construction, as well as a large deck that overlooks the ocean and smaller decks for intimate dining down within the lava rock crevices. Once everything was perfect, Tony opened this resort in 2003. It's been one of the island's most in-demand destinations ever since. Tony Robbins is famous for being able to get people to walk across hot coals. And no, I don't mean that just metaphorically speaking. But whenever he holds seminars here on his island resort, things are a bit more relaxed, especially for him. That's because Namale is the one place that Tony likes to come to unwind. As Tony himself likes to put it, it's the retreat to which he escapes to be with his family while also finding the time to climb in the rainforest, relax, write, and create. Tony does all of that from his own private residence on the resort known as Loma Longi. The natural environment on the island is bright and full of color, so the palette inside of Tony's home, specifically in his master bedroom, is neutral to highlight his views. The interiors here are an exotic extension of the jungle outside, and Tony's living room is said to open right onto the pool deck. There are also little details like antique prayer pages hanging above a series of bookcases in this room. Of course, with this being his own private fortress of solitude, Tony has refrained from sharing much about his own personal living quarters. But ever since first purchasing this property in the late 80s, he's expanded the resort's overall size to what it is today, with an additional 300 acres. And he's done it all by keeping to his own laws of success. He told AD, I wanted a place where people could experience serenity and freedom and be nurtured. I brought my friends here and thought I don't have to say squat, I can just sit here and watch them transform. According to Tony, anyone visiting this magical destination and experiencing its tropical breezes will find themselves in due time. So if you got a few thousand dollars just burning a hole in your pocket and you're finally ready for a little self growth, then the Namale Resort and Spa is calling your name. All right, everyone, that'll bring this house tour to a close. Thanks so much for watching, and before you head off, consider answering the following question. If you could own and operate your own resort anywhere on the planet, where would it be? Let me know where your personal Fiji is located in the comments below. Otherwise, like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications to make sure you never miss an episode. My name is Kara. Don't go anywhere yet, because coming up, I'm about to take you inside the homes of the late Jerry Sprinker. I'll see you all next time. Bye.